Breaking news at 9. Parents at Grand Falls Royalty ISD want answers tonight. Fox 24's Marco Ramirez joins us live. Marco, some neighbors have a warning tonight. And as you can see behind me, we have been seeing FBI. We have been seeing officers. Chase, it's what we've been waiting for, those warmer temperatures, <laughs> and they're finally arriving. We begin with two nonprofits working to help struggling oil field families stay afloat. Now local law enforcement is teaming up to investigate. Fox 24's Marco Ramirez joins us live. Marco, local police are really working. Here's a little something that can help out. Of course, an ice scraper. The snow is melting. In our station's parking lot, we have about an inch and a half. An emotional reunion between a victim and his rescuers. Our Gion Kim joins us now with this heartwarming story. Gion, you were a part of the reunion. What was that moment like? A lot of us see him on TV. We've seen the clips, but is he that person that we saw on television? We want to remind folks why we're wearing this pink. Of course, we Breast Cancer Awareness Month. For me, it's an issue that hits really close to home, and I know you know it affects so many people. I'm going to walk. We showed people the theater, but I'm going to take you through to the popcorn room. This is one of the most popular things about this melodrama. In fact, I'm told they fill up for each melodrama seven dumpsters a night. And this is what makes it so fun. People really get interactive with this. What do you guys do with this popcorn? You just throw it, right? They just throw it. It's $5 a bag, $20 a tray. A lot of entertainment right here. Woo! Popcorn fight. Back to you guys. We took an in-depth look at the issue here in Germany, and they talked to us. Congratulations to Monica Quintero for earning KPEJ a prestigious 2020 Edward R. Moreau Award for her reporting Beyond Borders. Breaking news at 9. Parents at Grand Falls Royalty ISD want answers tonight after police say a violent threat was made at a school. Fox 24's Marco Ramirez has more. Reporting in Grand Falls, I'm Marco Ramirez, Fox 24 News. Thanks, Marco, for that report. To keep up with the latest on this story, visit yourbasin.com. A nice, mild day here in the basin. Chase, we also have some warm temperatures in that forecast. Oh, yeah. I'm excited about those warm. Easter kicked off a bit early for some in the basin. The sixth annual Easter egg extravaganza took part this evening in Midland. It's hosted by the City of Midland's Park and Recreation Division. The big event involved around 15,000 Easter eggs. Fun event for everybody. What a great event. The extravaganza was held at the Martin Luther King Jr. Community Center. Chase, that forecast, it's kind of all over the place, but oh, I man. like it. We have cool temperatures, <laughs> warm temperatures, yeah. and some rain chances. You know, the fun thing about having a forecast that's all over the place is everybody's the same amount of disappointed. But You know, I like those warm temperatures. Mm. Either way, a lot of folks are going to be happy. Hard to believe Easter's already here. Easter's but here. It'll look good for those Easter egg hunts. We mm. like that. All right, thanks, Chase, thanks. for that. It is National Burrito Day. To celebrate, many popular Mexican restaurants are having sales discounts and even prizes. Chipotle launched burritos or Bitcoin. It's an interactive game. You could either get a free burrito or $25,000 in Bitcoin. Taco Bell also offered a free taco through its app. Instagram is putting a remix on a TikTok feature. It is part of the ongoing social media competition. Users can now upload a video next to a friend's clip, which builds on top of the previous video. The new function will remind many people of the popular duets feature on TikTok. Hey I like coloring those Easter eggs. <laughs> That's always fun. And Bing gets me pumped up. Yeah, he does. I know. Pumped up there. Did you hear I that? Yeah. It. The emotions are running high. That's for sure. I'll give a pep talk to some kids on an Easter egg. And what kind of coffee <laughs> did you have earlier? I, I got to get a glass of that kind of yeah. coffee. Oh yeah, they were very <laughs> candid to say the least. Yeah. All right, that is going to do it for us. Join our morning crew at 8 a.m. on Fox 24 News AM Live. Have a great night everyone. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Thanks for joining us for BR Change. I'm Monica Cantero at the Permian Basin Petroleum Museum in Midlands. As you can see, we're all around the basin and we'll also be showcasing our area. Be giving. We begin with two nonprofits working to help struggling oil field families stay afloat. We do have such a giving community here at the Permian Basin Petroleum Museum in Midland. It is rich in history. This is called the oil patch.
It's an exhibit dedicated to the workers of the oil fields. You'll even find equipment here from the 1920s and 1930s on the museum's 40-acre outdoor exhibit area. You'll also find drilling rigs and other important information. Three, two, one. We told you earlier about oil field helping hands. The nonprofit also teamed up with a local photographer to make a difference. People come together in good times and bad, up and down. Because of COVID-19, James Durbin started the Permian Porch Campaign. The project is simple. Schedule a front porch photo shoot, practice social distancing, and donate to oil field helping hands. The best part, it's all going to help oil field families in our community. So far, they've raised more than $3,000. If you haven't seen the Stonehenge replica in Odessa, it is a must-see site. Students and visitors flock to the UTPB campus to take pictures here. From a view above, it's incredible to see this replica matches the original Stonehenge horizontally. However, it's a little shorter in height than the English monument. This one only took six weeks to build. As you can imagine, the coronavirus battle is even more intense at nursing homes. So an employee at Manor Park in Midland wrote an inspiring song. He is very talented to hear the six minute song in its entirety, go to our website, yourbasin.com. Time now to toss it over to our Aaron Reynolds, who's at a location not far from here that honors our United States president. We begin with an inspiring story of a child seriously injured. I would not have wanted to um, live through that tragedy in any other community because this was a community that supported us from the second it happened. A year later, the memories of that painful and tragic day still fresh for Kelby Davis. This is a community that pulled over and stopped their cars and ran into the sound of gunshots to help us. The Odessa mother takes us back. It was a typical Saturday for the Davis family. They were headed over to a friend's house. Dad Garrett was driving, Mom Kelby in the passenger seat, and the twins Anderson and Rhett, who were just 17 months old at the time, were riding in rear-facing car seats. They planned to stop at Market Street on their way and hit a stoplight at 42nd Street and JBS Parkway in Odessa. When suddenly, the day took an unexpected and horrible turn. I remember just, just kind of ducking my head once I, once I heard the shots. Kelby immediately jumped back to check the kids and that's when she saw that Anderson was bleeding. She was just covered um, from head to her lap, just covered in blood. And I just started screaming, she's been shot, Anderson's been shot. I was just kind of numb to it, I was so confused. I looked down and there were a bunch of just clean diapers on the floor and so I just started picking diapers up and just putting them on her chest, putting them on her mouth, just trying to do whatever I could to stop the bleeding. The Davises say they never saw the gunman, but turns out he shot a bullet through the back of their vehicle. Vehicle. The shrapnel hit my daughter Anderson in the chest and then in the mouth. And when it hit her in the mouth, it just lodged in the chest wall. Um, but when it went through her mouth, it went through her bottom lip and knocked out her teeth and burned through her tongue. Their nightmare continued. Young Anderson in pain, crying for help. Her parents felt helpless. They tried calling 911 more than a dozen times. Due to the panic of the city, we were never able actually to get through to 911. But in their panic, a moment that can only be described as fate, Brad Reese and Kellen Foreman with Odessa Fire and Rescue just so happened to be at a nearby restaurant. These two men, truly angels, um, that I truly believe God sent. God works in mysterious ways. Where a lot of people, and I don't blame them, I might have been one of those people, um, stayed in the restaurant that day when they heard gunshots. Brad and Kellen chose to run towards the gunshots when they didn't have to, they weren't on duty. Then another hero enters the picture, Odessa Fire and Rescue Captain Jason Cotton. He stopped an ambulance who had another mass shooting victim so little Anderson could be transported to the hospital as well. But he just kept screaming, you know, help the baby, help the baby. The baby needs you more than I do. The baby needs you more than I do. And Kelby doesn't know the name of that victim, just that he wanted her baby to have priority despite his severe injuries. 
These parents have a long list of heroes. Heroes they say they can't think enough. I want people to remember the good, all the good that our first responders and our police did that day. Ready? As soon as you ready, one. This family attributes their faith for helping them move forward. And Kelby also talked about forgiveness. Are you strong? That shooter was once a baby. That shooter was once a little boy. And I laid there in that hospital room. And I held my little girl that night. And I pray my children grow up to know God. And to love God and just be good humans. That is the number one thing. I pray for my children to grow up loving God and be a good human. But some point along the way, that didn't happen for that little boy. He grew up to do a very, very evil thing that took people's lives and devastated families and just took so much from so many people. But um, anger, hate, no heart. My heart's broken for him. My heart's broken for his family. While it's still difficult to discuss, the Davis family stresses they have so much to be thankful for. Anderson is now two years old. Are you ready? Hang on tight. You got it? And there's her twin brother, Rhett, who was riding next to her during this terrible ordeal. Here, Their tight. parents believe they were too young to remember what happened. I'm just so proud of her because she's been a trooper through all the surgeries and everything she's gone through. I think you should use those feelings to, to help spread awareness and to help spread kindness and help use your story to help others. The Davis family is certainly doing just that. We also had a chance to talk with the three firefighters in Little Anderson's story, the ones they call heroes. We all have a job to do, we love what we do. We don't think we're heroes. We just have a job to do and we take care of people the best we can. We went out to help people just like everybody in that area did. Um, there, were, there were a lot of heroes that day all over Odessa and Midland, so um, I think we were just one many that did what we could to help who we could. To me, it's not, there was nothing about being heroes that day. It was just doing what we're trained to do. A Greenwood man turned his creative hobby into a successful business, and it's a profession much different than his previous one. Now it's just a matter of following the line. For two decades, Michael Pardue. And it's like welding. And every day he comes in with something different or something new. Has been a silversmith. Now I would see these really fancy silver bits and spurs that some of the other guys on the cowboy crew had. I couldn't afford any of that stuff. I admired it, I really wanted it, but we were broke. I kept telling Tammy one of these days, so I'm gonna learn how to do that one of these days. I'm gonna just make my own. And that burning desire sparked him to teach himself. Very first started, I learned it just by going to the public library and checking out books. The internet wasn't really a thing. He could do it with his eyes closed pretty much. Pardue was also a firefighter in the basin for 31 years. Most firemen are very creative people. He just retired last year. With that much time off, you have to find something to do. Or you'll be really bored. <laughs> so, I mean, you will. I am very proud. From belt buckles to knives, Pardue does it all. You can tell he tastes great pride in it, every single bit of it. Every piece looks... Amazing. And as part of his special signature, this one is says gratitude greater than expectations. He works to inspire. That was one of the greatest sayings I think I've ever heard. I mean, if you can keep your thankfulness and your gratitude above what you expect on a daily basis, man, you got it made. We're just following the line that I drew on there. And is deeply proud of his West Texas roots. I was born and raised here, so I'm very proud of Midland. As you can imagine, creating his items can take countless hours, but Pardue says he can create a belt buckle in six hours if he's extremely focused. He has customers from all over the United States. A lady arrived at the medical center emergency room with a with a, an unresponsive child. That 22-month-old baby covered in bruises. We did secure video of the uh, of the motel where these individuals were staying. I'm telling you, when I saw this video of what this individual did to that little boy, uh, it, I, it's, I got chills. I got, I actually got chills, and and <laughs> you know nothing bothers me after 
over 30 years of law enforcement. One suspect is the child's mother, 24-year-old Diamond Rocha. Sheriff Mike Griffith says she lied about the circumstances. People do this this kind of thing to, to children, babies, and, and, and then the, the significant other trying to cover for this person. What is the relationship between the it, two it, suspects? It's a boyfriend. We have contacted the biological father. He was not involved at all. The other is 24-year-old Jonathan McKissick. Authorities say he's the mother's boyfriend. Both are now facing attempted capital murder charges. The baby, how's the baby doing? Is he fighting for his life? What's his condition? And what is the outlook for the child? Uh, you know, really and truly at this time, we don't know what the future may hold for the child. We're hoping and praying that uh, this little guy will uh, will make a full recovery. You obviously want to protect these children, but at the same time, do you feel like you have your hands tied sometimes because you have to have that evidence to prove that they are doing something like we, this? We do have to have evidence. We It has to be proven. If we can prove it, we're going to pile as many charges on them as we can. Here's a timeline of when this happened. The mother brought the baby to the Medical Center Hospital emergency room on February 27th. At first, the suspects faced lesser charges, but the Sheriff's Department worked hard to gather more evidence to get those charges upgraded. That disturbing video came from a local motel in South Odessa. The baby is currently in a Lubbock hospital. The Sheriff says, sadly, he was told the child will have medical conditions the rest of his life because of his injuries.